well, the update from Lagos is that it's another poor start to the trading week in Nigeria. We saw today the NSC index lost 52 basis points on the back of fairly sharp losses from several of the rescued banks. So that risk aversion will continue to see in Nigeria. Um, we see many investors waiting on the sidelines. And today, indeed, we saw volumes come down significantly. Joining us in the studio right now to give us some perspective on the, this market and the major news making the rounds in Lagos today is Kyle Akindele, who is um, Managing Director at Green Great Strategic Partners. Thanks so much for coming on to the program. Let me first of all ask you your views on the market trend we're seeing right now. Um, starting the week poorly, I think it's not a, not a surprise given the way the market traded last week. I think it's not. I think what we're seeing is really the oscillation between these slight gains and losses. Mm -hmm. I think until confidence returns to the market, they're going to continue seeing that happen. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a catalyst that will kickstart mm -hmm. the market, and we haven't had that yet. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. I mean, many people were looking to the half-year results for the banks to probably be that catalyst, but obviously we've seen the market come down in the third quarter. But let's move on to some company news now. UPDC, that's one company that has um, approached the bond market to raise $15 billion, a five-year bond at 10%. First of all, let's talk about how you think that will impact on the company's performance since it's the only listed um, property development property developer in, on the NSC right now. I think, I think it's very interesting that um, UPDC decided to uh, tap into the bond market rather than look for a loan or mm. equity to raise money. Mm. I think that's a, it's a good start. I think the, the initiatives by the federal government to make the corporate bonds tax exempt helps in that process. Right. Um, I think it's interesting and especially if they still want to use the money to buy high-end real estate, develop mm -hmm. higher real estate, which should be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I think there also the fact that it was oversubscribed mm -hmm. and they managed to get to fall at 10%, which is very interesting for the market. Well, you failed to mention what I thought was probably the most interesting thing there, the coupon rate at 10%. I mean, that is just 75 basis points above the five-year federal government bond. I thought that was a phenomenal rate and obviously that's going to help their interest, um, ex it's going to bring down their interest expense significantly. It is, it is a very good rate, but when you, you have to look at it in, in terms of where the market is at the moment. Mm -hmm. The market is very liquid at the moment. Right. There has been systematic drawdown in the excess crude account. Mm -hmm. The term CBM is trying to reinflate the credit, the credit sector, so it's making sure that banks are quite liquid. And so banks are searching for yield. Banks and PFAs are searching for yield. Mm -hmm. And anything above FGN, um, PFAs and banks snapping up for their investment books. Mm -hmm. So I think they were quite lucky in that regard. And of course, it was massively oversubscribed. I think more or less highlighting the point you are making about the liquidity in the market. So where do you see the corporate bond market going from here right now? I mean, this is a very significant um, corporate bond. It's, one of, it's the first outside the banking sector in recent times. What are your thoughts on how the corporate bond market is going to develop going um, forward from here? I think the success UPDC has had in um, launching this bond at such a good rate and having strong subscription will encourage others to do so. I think Flower Mills have announced they want to do a 70 billion Naira bond program. I think this should encourage them to carry on with that bond program. Mm -hmm. But I think in terms from an investor's point of view, there's the, the high liquidity in the market at the moment. But in terms of medium to long term, you have to look at the inflationary pressures in the market. With mm -hmm. inflation at around 14%, mm -hmm. does it make sense to have yields at this low? It doesn't really, for, uh, especially from the investor's point of view. Mm -hmm. And also, you have to look into the, in the sense that the proceeds from the bonds, are they, how they're going to be utilized, and the bonds are going to be tradable. Because mm -hmm. the UPDC bonds are mostly going to go into PFA, it's not going to be traded. There's mm -hmm. no active, no active market. Majority. Exactly, because mm -hmm. they're pretty, uh, trying to encourage trading of corporate bonds like UPC on the stock exchange. But with the mm -hmm. current problems in the stock exchange and the actual lack, lack of um, knowledge on fixed income instruments in the stock exchange among brokers, I think it's going to be very difficult to kickstart that without some educative um, programs. I mean, you raised the point just now about 10% not being a, should I say a reasonable rate um, given where inflation is at 14% right now, or rather at 13%. But then you have to look at the options because in the money market, investors are getting 2% right now because of the risk aversion in the banking sector. So on one hand, yes, we want to say it's below inflation and you're locking in for five years. But right now, what are the options you really don't have, unless you, of course, you move to the equity market, which many are shying away from right now? Yes, I, I think especially BFA is in a difficult position because they have to invest the money for the long-term benefit of the pensioners. Yeah. But then when you look at some of this, a, lot, a lot of these products, if they're locking too much of that money at such use like this, it's just storing in problems for the future, mm -hmm. and that has to be borne into account. I think what the PFA is, as you said, there's lack of instruments out there. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you look at where prospective 
um, things like equity, some maybe some convertibles, or where some of the other instruments they might look into that might not necessarily have gone in now. That might be a better option than going into locking in so much more, so much of their money mm -hmm. at such a low yield. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I guess it's a matter of. UPDC probably taking advantage of the market conditions. But let's move back to the equity market now, even as we round up. Um, the outlook for this week, I think, is still very unclear. We think, I, I think the uh, broker was speaking to last week, was saying his bias is for the market to even trade lower. And obviously, this, to me, should be presenting more buying opportunities. But first of all, let me ask you, what's your outlook for the equity market going forward? Given the fact that we know that the um, rescued banks, we should be hearing some closure in terms of deals being done in that regard in the next maybe one month or so? I think um, there, there are two, two real trends I'm looking at. In terms of the rescued bank, yes, the, the Serbian governor confirmed that they had bids for four of the banks and expects some more bids for the other banks. But in terms of their results for the second half of the year, most of the rescued banks, although they're sharing profits, if you look at their operating income and operating expenses, mm -hmm. they're still not operating, their, their operating income is not covering their operating expenses. Most of their profits are from provisions from right backs and getting money back. So it shows them a difficult position. In terms of deals, although the bids have come in, don't expect none of those deals to be consummated in, within the next three or four months. So it's going to take some time to that, for that to filter through. And because that's 60% of the market, that's going to have a big effect. I think the second thing is market confidence. There's real, no real confidence in the market. You had the changes in the NSC, which has affected both the corporate and retail end of the market. In terms of the retail end of the market, um, in retail investors have been burnt, mm -hmm. and they've heard about manipulations, stockbrokers doing all sorts. There's lots of allegations going around. I mean, even the volatility doesn't encourage. It doesn't encourage. Investors. And SEC has come out and said they're going to take 260 individuals and uh, to the, to, uh, they've investigated and they're going to charge them. But they haven't named those people. If mm -hmm. I'm a retail investor, I don't know whether the broker I want to use is one mm -hmm. of those named or not. Mm -hmm. So why, what would I do? I'll probably stay out of the market until I'm, it's clear whether the broker, which broker is, have been charge and we brokers haven't. I think that's part of the issues SEC have to address. 